The whole field of proton therapy for me is of great interest. Um, there are very significant physical benefits of protons over photons. Whether that translates into a real benefit to patients, I think is a very difficult question um, that we have to ask ourselves. And uh, no doubt over the coming years, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have that data in a little more detail. But I think we have to take a lesson because I see huge parallels between what we're going through now in terms of proton therapy with what we went through 10 years ago with stereotactic radiotherapy and CyberKnife, where we had a whole host of early data, usually single institution retrospective studies, data that was at times of fairly dubious quality. We had manufacturers putting undue pressure on the media, uh, pressure on, you know, within the political system as well for the introduction of new technology, before we actually had really good quality randomised data. And actually, if you play devil's advocate, even today, 10 years later, for stereotactic radiotherapy, there really is, if you actually look for prospective randomised trials comparing it with conventional treatment, there's actually very little data. And the best data that we have is in lung cancer, but if you go out to some of the other tumour types, um, uh, liver metastases, pancreas cancer, the data quality really is very poor. So I think we as a group need to, need to learn from that and design good quality uh, studies from the outset uh, and really get our data collection quality uh, right up there as well so that you know, we're not in the same position in 10 years' time with protons as we are now with SBRT. I think we have to, we have to collaborate much more than, than has happened in the past. Um, we're now seeing that with stereotactic radiotherapy uh, within the UK in that we have the you know, NHS England's commissioning through evaluation scheme, uh, which is enabling us to collect data prospectively. Um, and I, I hope in due course we may have a similar scheme for proton therapy once the two NHS units go live. Um, the other helpful thing is that the cost of proton therapy is coming down. So the cost effectiveness argument, which is a very powerful one uh, within a restricted healthcare system such as the NHS, where we have to show value for money, um, is clearly very, very difficult when you have a treatment that is uh, you know, at least twice as expensive as the current gold standard. Um, so I, I think you know, there's the cost effective argument on one side, but the data quality argument on the other side as well. And I think we have to learn those lessons from the past um, and really do our very best to, to, to ensure that we have robust data collection from day one, prospectively analysed. And, and the UK can take a lead in this because we, we, we are, well, we're very good at collaboration, we're very good at working together uh, as a group, um, and we have the infrastructure in place to be able to do that. Um, we, ha we have the core clinical trial uh, about to start, uh, to looking at uh, uh, stereotactic radiotherapy for oligometastatic disease um, to try and get that phase three uh, randomised data to, sh to show once and for all is there or is there not a benefit. Um, we have to learn those lessons for proton therapy, even more so when you have a treatment that's, that's two or three times more expensive even than stereotactic radiotherapy. The data quality argument and the cost effectiveness argument becomes ever more important. There are physical benefits to treating patients with protons, whether those will actually turn into improved outcomes is the unknown. So that, that really for me is the big question. Are we going to see, as a result of those physical benefits, us able to dose escalate patients and improve control outcomes for tumours, but also are we going to see reduced toxicity as a result of those, those physical benefits as well? Um, I'd like to think that we will. Um, I'd like to think that we're always taking a step forward. Um, but uh, as I say at the moment, we, we simply don't know the answers to those questions. We have to know the answers to those questions to be able to offer value for money and to be able to offer cost effectiveness uh, to patients. Um, there is maybe a little bit of a conflict as well in that um, uh, the drive towards protons uh, can be driven by patients, it can be driven by the media. 
And I think we as a, as a group of clinicians have to respect that. We want to innovate, um, but we have to innovate um, with robust data. We have to innovate in a responsible way and collect our data in a responsible way and not be driven by uh, media, not, to be not necessarily to be driven by uh, these very emotive arguments. Um, and the obvious case being uh, Asha King, uh, for example. So you know, I can't stress enough the importance that we, we have that robust data collection from day one uh, to prove whether or not this technology is worth the extra cost, the extra expense. Thank you.